Hi, welcome to the Blockbuster Show, where we are shattering the complexities of crypto with news, commentary, analysis, education, and, and interviews. And today we have an interview. I'm joined with uh, by John Joshua Seth Hill. I almost said Jonathan again. I don't know why. Yeah. It's like the name just like gets into John's my John's a common name, so it's a lot like John. <laughs> Should be all right. John's a strong name. I, I take it. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. I was driving down the road the other day, and somebody was talking about Napoleon Hill, right? Who wrote the mm-hmm. book Think and Grow Rich, and is just a huge name within the like self improvement world and whatnot, right? If people might be familiar with that, I, I was just wondering, like, if it, has anyone ever asked if you were related or, or not? I've, I've actually wondered that myself because I've read his book and he, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't done the 23andMe, the ancestry, my, the genealogy history of the Hill name that, that come, that I was born with. My aunt has, so maybe I'll ask her and, and find out for sure. Uh, it's one of those things. He was a little bit before I think either of our generations by a long shot, right? That book was written oh, in yeah. the 50s. So um, it hasn't really been relevant for me to even dive into it. But I do wonder <laughs> that because uh, I have been asked that before. Well, he was an icon. So if there was some, you know, it's sort of like my name to Cummins. You know, people sometimes ask, well, do you have any of that inheritance money or anything from the Cummins <laughs> diesel engine company? And I sure wish right? I did. You know, it's an yeah. it's, uh, international company. Yeah. Huge, no book right? royalties but, for me. <laughs> no, no, nothing going on there. Although I, there is a long history of really intelligent, smart engineers in my family. Mm. Right. And uh, and my grandfather was a surveyor and a, a world class sniper, actually. A, really? A marksman. Yeah. 22 caliber. He led nationally for over three decades he held the title for for like 22 small bore rifle competition in the u.s he, he was apparently he was just phenomenal but anyway we just got way off topic like right off the bat oh, that, <laughs> i mean this is what's fun about podcasts you never know exactly what you're going to talk about we have our our bullet points okay. of what we want to hit but uh we can go That's from right. genealogy and names and sniping and who knows what else exactly. but uh, yeah i'd love to talk about crypto and how it's going to relate to solar because it's something i've been wondering and and just kind of researching to talk with you i've i've learned quite a bit so i know there's a lot of information that uh people should probably think about when it comes to crypto and energy and and solar as well absolutely and that is the subject that we're going to cover today is cryptocurrency and solar and how they might benefit from each other you know it could be that the the very high demand for energy that is created by bitcoin mining and other cryptocurrency mining cryptocurrencies that are proof of work might be a boon to the solar industry on the one right. hand right and then the, the the crypto industry might really be able to benefit from solar as a source of energy instead of other sources which might be more expensive and obviously aren't it's environmentally friendly and that sort of thing but before we get into all of that would you just take a moment and sort of tell everybody about yourself who you are i mean i know you're a solar expert and you know that's why and i'm kind of a crypto expert so just we've been talking about things and then we sort of were right. like hey it makes sense to get together and just like ask each other some questions and see where this might go and we I don't know if we have any idea really where it might go, but we're hoping that it's interesting and fun. I have a lot of questions I'm excited for you to answer because I consider myself in the crypto knowledge base to be really average. I've, I've researched it a little. I kind of understand it. The, the short answer that I tell people who I know or don't know anything about it is that, hey, just kind of imagine it's digital gold. Um, and then in the energy industry, what that means is because it's digital, it's all based around electronic devices. Your computer you know, creates crypto uh, essentially and it's all stored digitally so it's stored on on servers and computers that you know maybe even um, in your house right so what that means to me is that solar being the easiest form of energy for someone to own and generate themselves the easiest way to generate electricity yourself you know short of having a hamster on a wheel generating a few watts and just have solar on your roof is that that means you can be energy independent. Uh, I got into solar, I was raised on a farm. I love the idea of being independent, making your own food. You know, that's what we did growing up. My grandfather, um, speaking of kind of going up the line, so this does tie into our, our initial conversation. He, he was born and he was a kid during the Great Depression. You know, he was born in the 20s, came up in the 30s and, and they didn't have food. And so he um, served in the military and then used all of his money that he had saved up um, and part of his military you know, um, he, he also played poker in the military. So my dad says, and part of the farm was bought with, uh, with gambling winnings as well as his military money. So he bought a farm in, um, and, and that's where I grew up. That's my dad was, uh, one of 12 kids. I was one of four. 
and we all worked on the farm since we were we were little. And then okay. uh, I went to college, uh, played football, and uh, went to Brown University. Graduated, didn't quite know what I was wanted to do, um, and said, "Hey, you know, the renewable energy, especially the solar industry, it's a newer industry. I don't need experience to get into it." Um, and kind of the rest is history. That was five six years ago now that I decided to really go all in in the solar industry. Became a sales rep um, for a company. Um, in Idaho, where I now live, uh, and it's it's go been Idaho. really yeah, <laughs> go Broncos, right? It's I'm been actually really wearing fun. my Idaho shirt today. Oh, right. I had Texas, a sweatshirt so. on. That was, <laughs> was a Boise State uh, blue sweatshirt, but I thought I'd be a little more professional and change out of the sweatshirt. So, uh, but well, yeah, speaking I, of Idaho, I, speaking of Idaho, I'm going to interrupt you one more time. Doesn't it have one of the the cheapest? Isn't it one of the states with the lowest energy costs? It is. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll get into that. That's one of the things okay. that really relates to Bitcoin is the price of energy. Um, you measure energy for your home and on your energy bill in kilowatt hours. So this is important when someone, when you see a 60 watt light bulb and now they're LED, so they're only five or six watts, um, even less. And your computer or your air conditioner, they all use watts and 1000 watts is a kilowatt hour. And one kilowatt, one KW is how you're built. So if you use a thousand kilowatt hours and the price of energy is um, 13 cents per kilowatt hour, that's the average in America, your energy bill is going to be $130. Now that also doesn't include all the service costs and fees and taxes and things like that. Uh, so solar, that's how it makes you money. It makes kilowatt hours, which offset your energy locally on your home or business. And so um, I thought it was one of the coolest things to, to work and get into. Um, I became NABCEP certified eventually. That's the North American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners. You take a test, means you know what you're talking about in solar. Um, one of the few in Idaho. Uh, I'm not an electrician, um, but I, I very much, you know, my job for years has been to break down the cost of energy and how it relates to your investment in solar and, you know, what your payoff is and how that works. So even though Idaho as you asked, Justin has one of the cheaper costs of, of electricity in the nation. It still makes sense for solar because the main thing, kind of imagine when you go to uh, a theme park and the foods, you know, a, a hamburger costs twice as much. Uh, in Idaho, because the cost of living is lower, the cost to install solar is lower. So compare that to California, the taxes and permits and everything are much, much higher. So it's all kind of relative. You know, the cost of energy and the cost to buy your own energy with solar is different state to state, right? Hawaii has one of the highest costs of energy anywhere because they're an island. They can't import, you know, off mm -hmm. of our grid. And so, and, and then just getting solar panels out there costs more. So mm -hmm. everything costs more there, the cost of energy and the cost of investing in solar. Um, and so that's kind of the short of how I get into solar. I just chose it as a career because I thought it was fascinating. I thought it was really cool. And and I love it. I've been doing it for a long time now. I've done commercial um, solar, residential solar, helped hundreds of people go solar. And last year, I even built a truck that was completely solar powered and crossed America in it. And um, mm. that was just a fun project. A I was going to ask you about mine. that. Yeah. So it, the long and short of it, well, you know, I could I could talk for hours about it, but it's basically that uh, I wanted to prove the proof of concept that the transportation sector could be powered by solar. Uh, and as battery technology gets better, you're going to really see solar um, start to saturate the grid, I think. And I think one of the things that crypto has in common with solar is the decentralization aspect. So I'd love you to talk sure. to that because again, I understand why the grid is much better if we have all these different points of generating power, but how does that relate to solar and money and why is that so beneficial, the decentralization? Sure. Yeah, I mean, basically the whole idea behind decentralization is to remove the the trust that is required of companies and, and you know institutions, etc., and take that into the hands of the people themselves, right? So, um, whether it be you know with crypto, it has to do with the realm of finance and banking. If we can cut out the intermediaries, then we don't and and not have to trust them. We don't have to worry about things like you know historically there were runs on the bank, right? You know, and and so there's just a lot of issues. There's costs that are that that are incurred by using an institution. So they're you know ba becoming bankless, becoming your own banker is one of the big ideas and sort of con concepts of the decentralization with cryptocurrency. Uh, but it goes beyond that into some other really important benefits as well, such as resiliency, 
Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, whereas if you have a bank, for instance, let's say, you know, JP Morgan Chase that has a database that holds all of your financial transactions, if that database becomes corrupted somehow, if they're not uh, pack, backing it up efficiently, you know, I'm sure they have a, a certain level of redundancy and, and make sure that that doesn't happen. You know, for the most part, we can trust it, but until we can't, right? And some, right. you know, like if any, there's anything that we've learned by this COVID, you know, I saw something new today. <laughs> it made me laugh. COVID, somebody called it COVID-1984. And I just thought, right. if you're familiar with 1984 and Orwell, I thought that was quite, quite funny. But anyway, that's a, that's a side, a side yeah, thought. Yeah, let's not go down, we can go down. <laughs> let's go down that route at all. Basically, but, what about you hacking and the, the, the vulnerabilities of banks? That's kind of what you're talking right. about. That's how everyone, yeah. that's happened. Recently. Yeah, I mean, the, the database gets hacked and the, the customer's information gets stolen and, you know, it's even possible for records to be completely erased and that sort of thing, you know. So with a centralized system, somebody has access to that. Somebody has the keys, you know, and, and that person has to be trusted. That company has to be trusted. And and then, uh, yeah, but we're with, so with with the, actually the, the genius behind Bitcoin was not the 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 use case of like buying and selling things or using it as a currency it was this decentralized aspect that you had these nodes that ran on computers that anybody anybody could operate basically all around the world and you can run that full node and then the miners uh, provide security to that network so in the same way so it's like instead of there being i don't know maybe five or ten or twenty data centers that a company might have you literally have like tens of thousands of people running the copy of the database, which is the Bitcoin blockchain all around the world, you know, and then you have miners all around the world that are processing those transactions. So that when we talk about decentralization, that's the technological aspect of it. That just makes it incredibly resilient. Like you literally cannot shut down crypto, you know, Bitcoin, uh, unless you shut down the internet and, and the electricity, you know, either or. Yeah globally right <laughs> so, so that's that's exactly yeah. how solar is is you know uh, i see it as a function of the grid to give it resiliency you literally yeah. can't stop the sun from rising the next day and if you have all of these points of generation on people's roofs on businesses you know that just provides more resilience it makes it harder for there to be a blackout that takes out a whole city or a whole region i mean we've seen that historically as well even recently you know in texas people like to blame the windmills um and even though it was winter and a snowstorm uh the sun came out the next day and after a storm it's usually pretty clear so if there is some solar it just helps create resiliency on that grid I'd like to go back to one point that you mentioned, because again, for an average person like me, I still can't really define the term blockchain. Okay. So, you know, Bitcoin decentralized and the blockchain was part of the genius behind it. And that's going to be, you know, from what I understand, it can be applied now to um, all these other aspects, not just currency and finance, but uh, mm -hmm. you're seeing that. So right now it's in spring of 2021 and you're starting to see these things called um, N NF NFTs. NFTs, yeah, you know, got it, but, tokens. But, and basically, as I understand those, it's mm -hmm. using the blockchain to yeah. uh, apply to art. So you have this digital piece of yes. art that has the blockchain. So that means it basically can't be duped. Like you have the original and no one can just copy paste like you would a picture or text or something. And it gives it more value because now it's like the artist made this, they applied the blockchain to it. So this is the original work, kind of like the Mona Lisa, you know? Yes. Yeah. So the yeah the blockchain is is fascinating to me, but I still don't quite understand it. And if you could like boil it down <laughs> to a minute, that'd be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are we using minute in terms of like literally a minute? Because you know a minute can mean like a week or a month or a year now, right? So right. Yeah. No. If you a few <laughs> sentences, let's say, to try to have someone <laughs> kind of understand what it means when you say the blockchain, because I know a lot of people maybe who will watch this, and if they're environmentalists or they like solar. They're like, well, I understand decentralization because you can, it's pretty easy to imagine, especially if you just look at solar and rooftops, right? Um, right? And decentralization of money, okay, you have all these computers mining, but what are they doing when they're mining? And, and that kind of leads us back to our main topic of it's spending a lot of electricity to solve the blockchain, right? Right. All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll describe blockchain as simply as I possibly can. And it it's just basically a database. It's as simple okay. as that. So most people are familiar with an Excel spreadsheet, for instance, yeah. which is sort of the a super simple form of a database, right? You've got tables and you've got rows and you can put 
information into those cells within those tables and those rows, right? And then, you know, if it's like a SQL database, you can run queries and find all kinds of information and you can run data on that database to, you know, analyze the data, et cetera, that sort of thing. So you can think of blockchain that way. Now the difference, the reason it's called a, a blockchain though is, is twofold. Uh, every, there's a block that happens at a certain interval of time and different blockchains have different intervals of time. And what happens is every time a block gets solved by the miners, it gets entered into the database. So you can think of it that way. That's a new database entry, like a new record being put in. That block might have information about, you know, certain transactions that happened, a number of transactions. It could be 10 or 20 transactions, you know, maybe somebody sending Bitcoin back and forth from one wallet to another. So that's the that's the block aspect of it. And then the reason it's called chain, and this is where it very differs from a traditional database a little bit, is that that, you know, a block goes in and you, that's a database entry or record. Let's start on this side, right? And then another one comes and it gets entered after that one. But the first block is cryptographically tied to the block that follows after it. Okay. And that's where the crazy complex like cryptography and mathematical stuff and code comes in. So, you know, not it's it, the, part of the security of it is, is that you can't just put a block in there. Like you have to, it has to happen. There's a protocol that makes sure that the, that that's done properly. Right. And that involves the miners and there's complex uh, uh, there's a complex algorithms that, bring you it's called consensus where all the miners have to come to consensus and then that data gets entered in so what this also means is that it's immutable because then like another block gets entered in here mm -hmm. and that one's cryptographically tied to the block before it so you see this chain is developing this chain is developing over time so it literally is like a chain of literally like a chain that's being data. solved so what yeah. gives it value then well, there's a, there's a number the things that give it value. Uh, there's a, there's a, one of the things that gives it value in that in terms of the technological aspect of it, or that's derived from it, is that that's immutable, right? So because this one's cryptographically tied to this one, you can never pull it out, right? right. So that's what mean. That's why, like in a normal database, you know, we can go in and we can say, here's you know, so and so sent X to 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 a hundred dollars to. Bob sent hundred dollars to Alice, you know, and then we could go back in later on and say and change the record and say, no, Bob only sent fifty dollars to Alice, and like oh. that could be a hacking problem, right? Where somebody gets right. access to the database and just updates all the records. Well, with blockchain, you can't do that; it's immutable. So that the fact that Bob sent hundred dollars to Alice is there forever. Would right? that be encryption, like a different, like for what? Okay, so again, looking at the average person's perspective of what we think of as encryption, you encrypt something; it has it's 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 protected with a with a very complex path passcode and so our data you know our banking data is encrypted and and yes someone could hack it but it's really hard and it's it's generally pretty safe so how is this safer than that in that you know can't bitcoins be stolen i mean wouldn't you know i, I and that's something that confuses me too you know you have this, right. this immutable data okay but what what prevents someone to breaking in your computer and and taking that that coin or that data and how's that work what's the risk so th that's a good question because one of the misconceptions that people have, I think it's really hard to sort of make the leap or or understand or transfer in your thought to is with 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 Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, is that we talk about these tokens and we talk about these coins and so you know that's really just kind of like an anthropomorphism. It's just like a it's just descriptive. There's no actual physical coin somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, it's just entries in a database. So, right. but. The, but to answer your question, what provides the security there is every every wallet that get, gets, gets created on the blockchain, and that's recorded on the blockchain, has a uh, private key. And that private key is a set of like 16 words, right? Different blockchains might have different amount of words. Some might have 12, some might have more. But without that, without that private key, there's no way to access those the coins that are attributed to that address. And so, you know, that is a vulnerability. People will write down their private key on a piece of paper. And if they left it somewhere and somebody saw it and went, hey, that looks like that might be a Bitcoin private key, you know, they could right. get access to it. But that's also one of the strengths of it. One of the beautiful right. things of it that makes it like borderless and non-confiscatable. If you in theory were to memorize those 12 words in your head, let's just say, uh, let's say you were, you know, one of the people that was during the time of World War II trying to flee and get out of Nazi Germany, right? Well, you know, they 
for the most part had gold and gold is heavy. It's hard to carry and it's pretty easy to confiscate, right? And to find. It's hard to take it with you if you're seeing a, a war torn country. It. Right. Well, those, they could have just simply memorized their private key for Bitcoin. They could have gone, you know, uh, across the world to any other country, get on a computer, any computer, install a Bitcoin wallet with, you know, with those private keys, access everything that's on that, on that uh, dot blockchain database and uh, be set and good to go. So, yeah. So that kind of gives you as a, as an average person, the, the worldview, you know, big picture reason why it's so important. So it's uh, it's really fascinating. And I, I love the idea as, as I get more familiar with it of, you know, having my wallet, having my key, you know, maybe I'll memorize the key, but just basically this is a, you know, make sure you have your password or your key in a safe yeah. place and, and you know it, you don't lose it. Cause I've heard stories of that. That's, you know, made oh, it on the, someone, someone had X Bitcoin and can't access it and it's lost because they don't know the key. Yeah, just really quickly, the best thing to do with that is to create an encrypted thumb drive or like two or three, right? Go that redundancy thing. Make sure you have copies of it in multiple places. Uh, you know, make sure it's encrypted and password protected. Put a text file on there that has your private keys and give one to a friend or to, a, you know, put one in a safe deposit box, somebody that you can trust with someone that right. somebody, I say a friend, but, you know, <laughs> maybe with your mom. I don't know, someone you can trust, right? Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, just thinking about it, there could be a fire, there could be a flood or there could be, you know, mm -hmm. but I mean, and that, that sort of, you know, but this whole concept is, this is where I think that crypto and, and, and uh, solar really share and, and would attract some of the same audiences is with the people that want to be independent, that don't want to be reliant right. upon that centralized, you know, third now, now, now with, with crypto, you don't want to have to rely, rely upon the bank. And so there's all this stuff that's happening within the cryptocurrency. You just made mention of NFTs, non-fungible tokens, and this is going to explode and this is going to be huge. Uh, for a, a lot of different reasons. I mean, one thing that's happening, for instance, is uh, I was just reading in today's daily uh, crypto update that I do every day that, you know, there, there's a lot that's happening with sports with this and like sp fantasy sports and yeah. sports memorabilia cards. cards and right. Yeah. I mean, they're just the sky's the limit in terms of what can happen, but you can even like tokenize property and you could sell property that way. And, um, you know, it's, it's, this is getting easier and easier and easier. The thing that's interesting about it is, you know, like there was a time when it was difficult to make a website, you know, and most people right. would like be like, uh, now you can use something like Wix or Squarespace and how many you know, websites it's, builders it's just, there are. Yeah. And it's still time billions. consuming. It could be a pain, but where we're going with crypto, which is kind of interesting is, is to the point where it's like, if you want to create an NFT of your own for, you know, to represent either physical products that you have, or you create some sort of digital asset, you create an ebook, let's just say, you could literally sell that ebook that's connected to that non-fungible token, get paid in crypto and ensure that nobody is able to pirate the book basically because they have to have wow. that cryptographical key, that that NFT to open up the book, you know, stuff like this. So and just, it cuts out all the point, intermediaries. Yeah, that yeah. point there, that would have solved, right? Like all of the, the music industry, the the um, oh, yeah. movie industry and TV of, of yeah. streaming and things like that. And, and eBooks, you know, I, I have worried about that. You know, oh, you put in all this work like years potentially into a book. You put it out there, you sell a few copies, but ultimately people are just copying, pasting your book and you're not getting paid for that. I mean, it's absolutely, uh, it could revolutionize a lot. So I want to get back to yeah. the, the solar aspect and talk about the demand numbers of, you know, cause so, so in my industry, again, it's, it's measured in kilowatt hours on uh, my website, awakensolar.com. We try to break down and my, my videos and social channels tries to break down, you know, basically doing what you're doing at Block Thrasher. And so, so if someone wants to know about NF, uh, T's non-fungible tokens, Block Thrasher. I recommend going there. Yeah, I'm going to be reading on BlockThrasher.com. Become a member. Uh, you can do it for free and keep up with what what Justin Justin is uh, researching for us. But yeah. the power demand of mining has has gotten crazy big. Let's just say, for lack of a better word. So I have some numbers here. Uh, yeah. I was thinking that electric vehicles. You know, as we're shifting our transportation sector, um, like I had that electric truck and I wanted it to charge on just solar, and so I never plugged it into the grid. I used zero grid power to cross America in a uh, a truck that was carrying cargo weighing about nine tons. So sweet. You yeah, crazy. But it took a long time, and so if we uh, add our infrastructure, we can fast charge using the grid that's going to use a lot of electricity. If we have a million more electric vehicles, uh, each one of them charging, let's say 20 kilowatt hours, 10 kilowatt hours a day. I mean, you can just do the math and see that that's an exponential growth curve of demand of electricity. That's going to cause the uh, electric cost to go up, you know, as we, even in Idaho, 
right? Okay. So we're going to need more electricity. How are we going to generate that electricity? Nuclear? Well, we've already got about 50 nuclear plants in America. Nobody wants one in their backyard. Um, Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, you know, you just name it. There have been nuclear disasters. And so while it's cheap per megawatt, it's again, it's centralized. Uh, it's you've got a risk of meltdown. We don't know what to do with the nuclear waste. So solar, you can put some on your roof. You can put it on a Bitcoin mining station in your backyard and generate the power to mine that Bitcoin. So to give you some perspective here, uh, the numbers that I looked up, and this is a projection for electric vehicles, uh, what they're going to use between 50 and 150 terawatt hours um, per use by 2030. So in the next eight, 10 years, we're going to see electric vehicles use terawatts. So uh, 1,000 kilowatt hours is a gigawatt. 1,000 gigawatts is a megawatt. 1,000, or sorry, 1,000 kilowatts is a megawatt, and then a gigawatt, and then a terawatt. So terawatts a huge amount of power. Basically, a, uh, I believe it's a billion or trillion. If you were An arc to- reactor, right? <laughs> 1.21 gigawatts, right? 1.21 uh, gigawatts. <laughs> Yeah, you see so, a white look, hair coming out with like all. Yeah. <laughs> so EVs right now are are just you know maybe a terawatt or two. Um, crypto today from Cambridge uh, Research, one hundred and twenty one terawatts. Yeah, that's 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 a huge number. And I'm um, guessing the vast majority of that is happening in China, probably. China's number one, but the U.S. is number two. Yeah. So I looked that statistic up too because I was said, well, that's worldwide, right? Crypto is right. this worldwide currency. Anyone can buy anything from someone in another country without a bank or a government involved. Uh, but 7% in the United States, which, you know, without getting too deep into the water, it, the weeds is $1.1 billion worth of electricity in the U.S. Okay. This year is spent on 1. mining. 1. Yeah, $1.1 $1. 1 billion, billion dollars okay. is, you know, the, so the kilowatt hours, it's, it's uh, 121 billion kilowatt hours total. 7% of that, um, you know, if you, if you break it down into dollars, it's 16 billion total is spent on kill. So I looked this up to the, the worldwide rate of electricity. It's cheaper in China, but the U S is actually just a little bit above China. Germany's at the top. Um, some, some numbers there in the U S it's about 13 to 14 cents per kilowatt hour. That's mm-hmm. our, our rate. Yeah. And, and the cheapest are like Saudi Arabia, Russia, five and six cents. So they're about half China is about eight or 10. And then Germany's like 38 um, Germany, and, and those numbers are misleading too. People talk about, well, Germany added all these windmills and solar to their grid and it caused the price of electricity to go way up. That's kind of true. They also revolutionized their grid. They have one of the most reliable grids in the nation. And for all the first world countries, the US has one of the least reliable grids. We have more power outages than most first world countries. Um, so that just gives us some perspective on cost. And so as that cost increases, as mining increases, and we were talking about this, that there are two two basic ways to create crypto. There's mining, which is what Bitcoin does, and it solves this algorithm. And then there's the, and that's called proof of work, right? Yeah, proof of work, that's right. And then there's proof of state. And so proof of state doesn't use nearly as much power, but basically we're not getting away from proof of work yet, at least not for the next couple of years. Um, So I see Bitcoin causing the price of electricity because it's just supply and demand, huge demand for mining worldwide, um, but quite a bit in America. And so gonna cause the price of electricity to go up, which is going to mean that investing in solar gets even more beneficial, creates even more of a return. So it's really cool. You're saving money by, let's say, owning solar, and you're also able to use the electricity it generates to create money. So you could double your returns, I suppose. Um, yeah, especially asked- if the if the solar panels that you have on your home or business or whatever it is, is creating excess energy mm-hmm. to me, then it just seems like a no-brainer. Now, obviously, I guess typically the way it works with solar, though, is you're you're putting a lot of money out initially. Is, is that true? In, in order to so again to- with with banking financing, solar is is ninety plus percent of of installed systems that you see are financed. Meaning, mm-hmm. what they're doing instead of paying the power company, let's say two hundred dollars a month, they're paying for their solar two hundred or one hundred eighty dollars a month. Maybe it's even less okay. to start, and it's static. That that cost is never going to go up. They're paying it off. So I tell right. people it's like renting versus owning. You know, if you have a house yeah. you live in and you pay a thousand or two thousand dollars a month in rent, uh, at the end of the year you're out twenty grand. Whereas if you own the house, your equity is improved by twenty grand. So solar is equity and energy. It's basically energy generation for the same cost that you would buy it from the power company and rent it. You improve your your property values and you pay the same monthly. But yes, if you were to pay for it cash, you know, just like buying a car, you can pay for it all at once. Right. Um, 
but financing is how 90 plus percent of people buy solar. Uh, and then what you could say is then the excess energy, instead of letting it go out onto the grid and getting compensated for it by the grid, you could just burn it. You know, you could have a programmed computer that uses the electricity and talks to the solar to see, you know, how much power it's producing to always, you know, burn it right there on site, uh, mining like mining crypto. There's one interesting other issue with this, and that is that a lot of people who've been mining Ethereum or Bitcoin or Litecoin at their house, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're consuming a lot of power, a, a much higher level than normal. And there's been stories of the electric company looking at that and going, what's going on? Right. They, is it a grow house? And grow so house. people have literally had <laughs> law enforcement <laughs> knocking yeah. on their door like, ATF what's going on here? <laughs> oh, yeah, I can only imagine. I mean, because you look at it from their perspective, they see that meter just spinning like crazy using all this electricity. Yeah. and it, It's a red flag. I mean, that's how for a long time we found grow houses. But now you, you would just, you know say, yeah, you can't come in. I'm just buying crypto, like leave me alone. But if you well, had well, solar, the power company would never see that. Your, your power right. would be used there that's, before it ever That's goes. where I was going with that. And I was, I was wondering also if there's an application for, you know, the, the, um, the growers out there, obviously in a number of states that are, yeah. you know, whether it's hemp or other substances. Anything you right? want to grow. Like, wow, <laughs> anything you want to grow. It takes yeah. a lot of energy, right? Similarly to, to mining. So. Yeah. One of the interesting things to me that's the technology where it's going is that solar is now going to be integrated into glass. So now you can have high rises where the, mm. the south side of the building or even east, west and south, the glass would be tinted with silica cells that would create electricity. So it would look just like normal glass and reduce some of the sunlight coming into the building, but generate electricity to power that building. And then I would also say that what we can do with vehicles is instead of making the roof out of metal, you make it out of the panels, right? Out of solar panels, which are just as strong as, as your basic aluminum, you know, uh, roofing material, if not stronger with their frames. So you can start to replace some of these things that we're traditionally using to build ma building materials with things that generate electricity to offset that demand. I don't know why it's really? not being done more often right now already in 2021, but I think in the next five years, you're going to start to see some really creative ways to generate electricity um, out of buildings, out of cars, even that, that we're not really, you know, that we say, Oh, why didn't we always do that? And right. now as we have crypto and electric vehicles creating more demand for electricity and everything sort of moves to being based on an electric, you know, grid, the grid's more resilient and people can own their own power with solar. And that's, that's a pretty beautiful thing to me. And you had asked about uh, EMP, electromagnetic pulse vulnerability. Yes. yes. And uh, I looked up this topic and everything is, is um, basically vulnerable to uh, a solar event. Um, okay. the, the solar, solar flare. flare. Becomes, yeah. uh, it's got a specific name. I forget. It's also a three-letter acronym. Corona mass ejection CME. There probably. you go. That can happen yeah. and that'll, that'll ruin everything. Um, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, if, you have, <laughs> if you have solar panels. <laughs> no more topics. Uh, yeah. Generally, your solar panels are going to be safe with, with most of these type of events. Uh, okay. What's going to get fried is your inverter. So what's connected, mm. what's converting that power to AC, DC on the solar to AC in your house, that'll probably get fried. Uh, so having yeah. a backup one of those would in probably a be good cage. Idea. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. A Faraday cage, exactly. I have a link yeah. actually I found. It says build your own Faraday cage. It's super simple. Um, yeah. it's not, and it's not tough. Yeah. you could put that around, around your inverter if you were full prepper, you know, wanted to make sure that an <laughs> event couldn't take out your system. But like what I have, I have extra solar panels, older ones that are completely disconnected and those yeah. will never get harmed um, by any event. So if you just have some extra equipment, like, you know, redundancy, right? You have a exactly. backup, a backup to your backup, uh, to your well, soul. You know, it's interesting talking about this, you know, and you, you mentioned the term prepper and, you know, it's something that, you know, with things like COVID and then like this thing that just happened in Texas where we had this 100 year yeah. storm happen and, you know, more and more people. I think it was just a bad storm. I don't think it was a hundred year storm. I bet we'll have one know. in five years, another one just like it. I'm I'm not gonna debate with you, but I mean <laughs> people who've lived there their whole the, here in Houston area, their whole lives have like, you know, I mean I've talked to people that are close to 20 who've never seen snow themselves. Like, or you know, so right, right. so so but when that happened here, like our pipes burst and we actually were quite lucky and never lost our electricity. But many people around us did like the vast majority yeah. and there were families that were literally 
in their home for a week or two weeks with, uh, you know, with 20 degrees and lower. And there's pictures of like pipes that burst and there's like huge, massive icicles that built up in kitchens and things like this. And, you know, obviously people died from the thing. Uh, But as you mentioned earlier, the, the, the grid just isn't as resilient. I think I can say that word resilient. Right. Uh, as people might think, we we sort of in the United States grown to have this expectation that it's I, I call it normalcy bias that it's just going to always be there, but that's not necessarily the case. And we saw that man when I I went I, I'm I'm equipped for snow because I'm from Idaho, right? So mm-hmm. I mean I actually still have snow tires on my yeah. Tahoe, yeah. which is four wheel drive. <laughs> I've got chains, I've got a tow rope. I, I mean, like you know, and driving is no big deal for me. But when I went out, it was a ghost town. And what was interesting was. I had to drive into Conroe, which is probably 25 or 30 miles away, just to find a gas station that was open. All the other gas stations are like, that's something else that you just have to think about. What do they use to pump gas? Electricity. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, my issue wasn't that I couldn't get gas because I happened to have a full tank. What really was bothering me was I couldn't get a cup of coffee. It really sucked, (laughs) man. (laughs) Right? So So I don't really care about being able to get around when the power goes down, but I do need to be able to make a cup of coffee. And so that might be (laughs) where solar comes in. But what I wanted to ask you was how, let's say that I wanted to just get to the point where I've gone completely solar and my house is, is, is all solar and my vehicle, how viable is that? And, and is it, you know, how expensive is it? Or is it, you know, what, what what would need to be done? I mean, so, that's a great question. And so on my YouTube channel and my website, awakensolar.com, I will be making videos with special answers to these questions because it can okay. get really complicated. I mean, everyone's house uses a different amount of electricity. Uh, people want different things. And so, you know, what I say is like, if you can go without an air conditioner, it's actually pretty cheap to have a solar and battery backup system. And I would even throw in a generator there, uh, a generator hybrid, a, a small like RV system. Imagine you have an RV okay. and you want, you know, for six, $700 from uh, a big warehouse store, you can get a generator for an RV, a portable one that you can use to power things in your home. Getting gas for that may be an issue. So you also want a few solar panels and a couple batteries to store that power. And then you'll never want for coffee, but also yeah. for heat. I mean, a small, <laughs> yeah. uh, I have one right here next to me. Let me actually pick this up to show you. This is what I recommend to people for heat and backup and power and all that. These little guys, they're oil heaters, yeah. little radiator. You turn them on. I actually, uh, I was curious exactly how much power they use. So I put a little um, device between the, the outlet and them. And it's, it's only a few hundred watts, right? Yeah. That they pull. So you could power one of those overnight from solar that you harvested during the day. Uh, and if there's a power outage, still have power without gasoline, you'll have heat, you can use your phone, uh, make your coffee. And, and those low wattage devices, I mean, for let's say a couple thousand dollars, you could be completely reliant and have emergency power, right? Instead of having a kerosene lamp, like we had in the days, I I grew up in Florida, we had hurricanes and the power would go down about every year. And that still happens. Like I was talking about before in the United States, we do take it for granted, but we have more power outages than any first world country. And it costs us billions as a country when that happens, when the domino effect happens. And let's say in 2003, the whole Northeast you know, had a power outage and you have a software bug from that centralized system that that causes, you know, millions of, of dollars in damage with businesses and homes out of power. And in Texas, uh, I was also reading a fun fact, the, the recent outage and storm that you guys had caused the price of electricity to jump from about 50 to $100 per megawatt hour to 9,000. Wow. So you saw a 10,000% increase in the cost of electricity um, onto the grid and, and, you know, whatever the systems that cause that and whatever policies and the weaknesses, um, I would much prefer to be able to make my own power. And that's why I love solar. It's Absolutely. not that I want to see gas and oil disappear overnight. It's that you can just think through in the next few years, all of the things that are going to cause electricity demand to go up and prices to go up. And for someone to invest in owning their own power, having an electric vehicle that you can drive and charge yourself with no, you know, government authority to be able to stop you from being able to turn sunlight into power to drive around or make your coffee or store your, your, um, crypto and mine it even, or transfer, you know, wealth. Uh, that's really cool to me. That's, that's sort of the future we're looking at. And as you pointed out, being able to apply that to all these different, you know, 
traditional systems and revolutionize them and make them more secure, safer, and um, better for the average user. Uh, right. It's really, really cool. So I'm trying to, I'm, I'm rambling. Speaking, I think you're speaking some of the language that it really touches uh, the crypto audience here with this, because obviously one of the reasons that uh, many people have been drawn to Bitcoin is its deflationary aspect, right? Mm -hmm. we, we, it's a known entity in the sense that we know what the total supply is going to be. And uh, obviously we've seen, you know, like celebrity after celebrity, person after person, institution after institution that at one point in time was very negative to, to Bitcoin, uh, kind of come around and start to say, okay, it's here to stay. And it's a, it's it's becoming, you alluded to it even, I know you said it early, that it's the digital gold. It's being considered as, viewed as a digital gold, right? So a hedge against coming inflation. And inflation is a huge concern, I think, uh, you know, and, and again, it's something that people in the crypto world talk about a lot. Uh, and it's one of the things that attracts them. Well, when I think of solar, it also can be a hedge against inflation as well, right? Because, you know, we know that we know what's coming. We know that there's going to be, there's going to continue to be an increase in the supply of money. There's going to be more stimmy checks after, <laughs> you know, there's going to be stimulus. And, and, and they try to say there's no inflation, but if you go and you look at the price of actual things that people buy, whether it's food and, you know, just across the board, things get more and more and more expensive. So it just sort of makes economic sense to be able to lock in to say, I know, okay, even, you know, I know that this is what my power generation costs are going to be moving forward. And right. I don't have to worry. I mean, maybe it doesn't happen. Maybe there's no crazy inflation or hyperinflation, or maybe we have the inverse happen, or maybe production of electricity, you know, ramps, whatever, there's market forces at play. But it is nice to kind of know to have that peace of mind that, you know, because, because maybe the grid doesn't go down, and maybe it's not that catastrophic event. But it's just like it, energy becomes so expensive that we have to start thinking about whether we want to you know turn the lights on or we have to you know or whatever you know kind of right. thing and maybe the same with right. fuel too with gasoline it could be the same thing i mean exactly. we've had a really nice long stretch of a pretty you know pretty reasonably priced or, or, or affordable yeah. gas but oh, that doesn't so necessarily cheaper. mean yeah compared to europe i mean it doesn't mean it's going to stay that way though like there are geopolitical there could even be you know uh I don't know, natural disaster events or anything like that, that could, that could change that, that factor or government could take steps that next thing, you know, it's like gas is $20 a gallon. And we're, we're sitting here, you know, debating, do we, do we, you know, do we go to the store today or, or try to, you know, just go twice a week or every, twi every two weeks or something like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So Our parents but if, lived through that. That's yeah, happened. exactly. I mean, in the exactly. 70s, the energy crisis, but you hit exactly. the nail on the head. And I want to flesh out that point because that's really, when I get pushback, uh, first, well, two things. So who do you think my main demographic has been over the years I've spent in solar? I've run thousands of appointments with, <laughs> with people. And you might think, oh, the millennials or the environmental Baby boomers is what I would think. But it's the people that are about to hit retirement and they know okay. they have a fixed income. Right. Ah, and they've yeah. seen their entire life, their cost of living, what you're talking about, inflation, whether or not we have this period where inflation goes way up. It doesn't matter. It's one and a half, two percent per year. And that's a compounding effect. So when you say, you know, you talk to someone in their 40s or 50s and they're looking at the retirement and they know that when they were a kid, a gallon of gas was, you know, 80 cents or a dollar. A gallon of milk was 50 I can cents. Remember, I can remember when Snicker bars were 25 cents, man. Right. Now they're like a dollar 35 or something ridiculous. And you look at your cost of things like gasoline. And if, and if I were to tell them, this is an analogy I use. I said, if I could take the cost you paid for gasoline when you were 20 years old, right? Or you're 16 and you have your first car. And I could lock that in for the next 20 years. Would you do it? Right. Yeah. Of course you would. Yeah, You've seen that happen. You've seen gasoline just keep increasing, yeah. right? It goes down. It, it fluctuates yeah. more than most commodities, but electricity is no different. And when someone says, why would I spend thousands of dollars to go solar? Right. And, and just replace a hundred or $200 power bill. Well, take a $200 power bill, $2,400 a year. Now factor in inflation and rate increases, which are both again, over a five and 10 year period. have never gone down. They've always creeped up. In fact, they've doubled in the last decade. So you take your power rate, $2,400 a year doesn't sound like much now, but it's going to be $4,000 in a few years per year. And so now a twenty dollars or $30,000 investment that's paid off in five, six years is a really good hedge 
against inflation. And when you're, you know, someone looking at retirement, having a fixed income, having extra money because I've got a solar system that's paid off, I don't have a power bill, we can live comfortably, you know, run our air conditioner in the summer or run our electric heaters in the winter. And maybe we have an electric car and we never have to worry about the price of gasoline either. I mean, to right. me, that's that's where it's at. And that's why solar is such a revolutionary thing. It gives the average person the ability to own their own power and not pay for inflation, um, not pay for the cost of living increases that you're going to see. I love it. So there's something else that's happening in the cryptocurrency space. It's called interplanetary file system, right? <laughs> IPFS. Go way, I know. I've, I haven't even heard of this. So you're going to go <sighs> way above my head or maybe I'll understand it, but I'm, I'm excited. That sounds, that sounds like something out of a sci-fi novel. Interplanetary file system yeah so okay. so basically what it is is it's a it's an internet like protocol where uh, okay yeah so i'm just thinking here like i'm just now i'm just going off into like the whole you know like imagination I, I <laughs> I but if you had a neighborhood that had a, you know uh i don't know 20 homes that had solar connected and and in those 20 homes, they were running servers that were running IPFS servers mm -hmm. that were serving up these websites on the IPFS protocol instead of the HTTPS protocol, which is what the internet is now. All of them would be able to, and you know, through Wi-Fi, also connect to each other and run that 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 local network, if you were will, and serve up whatever files are stored on their servers right and if you could extrapolate that out and expand that out like to a to a, to a larger scale it, it you know it's just kind of it's just kind of in my thing like it's kind of cool because there's a possibility there for for an internet that is completely decentralized that isn't reliant upon the isps uh, phone carriers whatever you know and talk about really the unleashing true freedom of speech and, and even just freedom in the sense of the ability to communicate with each other, then you tie that into solar, you know, there's like all of these things kind of come together, which like, you know, there's that possibility to, to just really create some, some resiliency and, uh, you know, and when, and that resiliency brings with it freedom and some other things that are really kind of cool too. But I don't know, it just got me thinking about that, you know, but one of the questions that I wanted to ask you was, you know, there's two two ways to look at what we're talking about. This whole issue with solar and cryptocurrency, and, and you know, and it might just be one thing that might be smart for people to do is if they if they've if they've gone forward and they've gotten solar installed on their home, right, um, and they have some excess energy available to just buy a m mining rig and plug the thing in and print some money, basically. You know, like I've gotten my solar. I I love that idea because yeah, yeah you are. You know, you're you're using a commodity, electricity that has a cost, that has a value, and right. instead of letting the power company, you know, give you, let's say, some value in the form of net metering credits by putting it out on the grid, and and then they're profiting from it. I mean, uh, look up the average salary of power company CEOs. I have yeah. news for you. Uh, it's one of the best jobs in the world because you have a guaranteed profit. Usually they're semi-monopoly type systems and they're in the millions per year. So uh, they're taking some of your profit for your kilowatts versus if you could create, you know, use that commodity to directly create currency. It's a, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. And so that's what I'm going to be doing. I actually, I know you've written an article on it. Uh, I haven't had time lately to read it and invest and build my own mining rig, but I will yeah. be because yeah, I have solar and yeah that extra power, I'm going to fire that sucker up whenever I've got extra kilowatts that, you know, instead of letting, I mean, I'm going to have a, a buffer with the grid, a, a, a bank of energy, if you will, but I'll have yeah. the ability to have power when the grid goes down and I'll have the ability to use my extra kilowatt hours to literally make me money. Uh, and as you said, the, the, the fact that so many people are, are looking at Bitcoin and other cryptos to invest against inflation as an asset, um, right. I, I think it would be very stupid to not have yeah. some of your portfolio, even if it's just 1% into, right. into crypto or mining, because it's it's low risk and you have this sort of ability for it to, to increase and increase in value because, I mean, you just look at the graph, what else has increased the same amount of crypto over the past one year, five years? Yeah, Nothing. very little. Yeah, and everybody's coming around, even Mr. Wonderful, who in 2019 said, you know, Bitcoin has very little use cases or something, just the other day said, yeah, I'm an investor now and I'm, I've am i allocated 1% of my wealth. I'm looking at allocating up to 3%. I I'm really looking at getting into mining of Bitcoin, okay. which is interesting. But just going back to that whole thing, there's that so there's that one potential aspect of 
you know, you've got solar set up and then you want to just like, you know, mine. And, uh, oh, by the way, Ethereum mining, the Ethereum miners earned more last month. Last month was the most valuable, most valuable month uh, for mining ever of mining wow. Ethereum just this That's last February month. February 2021. Yeah, and that's in part because obviously uh, the, the cryptocurrency space has been just growing leaps and bounds with mass adoption and institutional investors are coming in and regulatory concerns have been pushed away aside and things like that. Um, but we are, you know, starting to see inflation heat up a little bit. And, and, and you know, the Federal Reserve has come out and basically said that they're not concerned about it and they're, they're willing to heat things up a lot more. And uh, they, they've been doing quantitative easing and basically the printing of money like, you know, like, uh, like... <laughs> crazy for the longest time and there's you know it seems like there's no end in sight to that so so you know if all of that goes the way that it makes sense that it would and as people expect we're going to continue to see that the cryptos increase in value relative to the dollar right in, in a nominative in turn of nominative sense so so the the thing is if where i'm going with that is even if you're not making much on it currently like so 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 a lot of people what happens with mining just is people will, will start mining and then they shut their miners off when it's a bear market because it doesn't, it doesn't seem that profitable. You're just breaking even barely. Right. right. Or yeah. So, but with, but with, yeah. So, uh, but what they end up finding out down the road is if they've kept mining through that bear market, when the bull market comes back around, they just look back and they go, wow, I just missed, you know, thousands, sometimes millions of dollars of opportunity. So, so that's just a, a separate side point, but you know, what, where is going with this? Just to try to, get, I was trying to finish this thought of there's the, there's that, there's that idea of, you know, you've already, you've already made, you've already bit the bullet and you're, you've gone solar and, and you've got some extra power and you can recuperate some of the cost and all that with mining. But what about the inverse? Like, is it really viable to, to use solar? Like, like, you know, I don't know if you've run the numbers or not, but that's what would be interesting to me is do, would I need, you know, uh, 3000 acres of solar panels to, to run, you know, 10, uh, Bitcoin ant miner mining machines or whatever, or, 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 you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, do the yeah. numbers work? Is, is it even viable really? Or is it not? Is it, is it kind so, of like, you're just going to be better off some other way? Method, right. Method, method. Yeah. So yeah. absolutely it's viable. And the reason it's viable is the cost per kilowatt hour of solar that you own is already less than a kilowatt hour buying it from the power company, okay. even okay. in a state like Idaho. So the cost per kilowatt hour here, the, the, the base rate is about eight cents. Now, if you use more, they charge you more. So it goes up to 12 to 13, 14 cents per kilowatt hour. If anyone wants to know how much they pay for electricity, you really want your yearly total of kilowatt hours, um, 10,000, 20,000 kilowatt hours per year, but you can even take your last power bill and see how many okay. kilowatt hours you used. And you take your power bill total, the, the amount you paid, you know, $200, and you divide by the kilowatt hours you use to get your true price per kilowatt hour. Because it'll have a price per kilowatt hour on there, like in Idaho, eight cents, but you really paid 10 cents because you paid all those fees. Right. So the price per kilowatt hour of solar is about five cents, right? Really? Uh, it's come down. Okay. Yeah, it was six cents okay. last year, five cents. It'll probably hit four. You know, batteries are going to be the main investment problem. But I see electric vehicles, you have an electric vehicle, it could potentially be your ba your battery, and you can have vehicle to grid, what's called V2G, and you'll, you'll basically have your, your car can serve as your emergency power source, right? Mm -hmm. So the solar during the day fills up the car, and if the power was out, the car could power your home at night, because the battery is big enough yeah. to do that. So you wouldn't even need two battery sources. But depending on how many rigs, I mean, and, and so when you look at a whole house's power use, what we traditionally do in solar is size so that in a, you know, if you use 20,000 kilowatt hours in a year in your house, we want the solar to produce 20,000 kilowatt hours throughout the year. And with net metering, you don't have to worry about batteries. Um, if you want to produce a little more than that to add in mining rigs, as far as the total house usage, they're pretty low, but not insignificant if you start to add multiple rigs, right? So right. if a mining okay. rig uses yeah. a few hundred watts of power and you have 10 of them, well, now you've got a constant draw of thousands of watts. So you would need right. a lot of solar. And you would need yeah, and in space you know, a lot of surface issue. area. Yeah. You need a bigger roof. So that's the problem. And that's why, <laughs> you know, if you were to put in a really um, hefty, you know, if you were all in on Bitcoin and, and you were an average person, you know, um, maybe buy, buy some ownership in a storage unit. Um, a storage facility and, and put a bunch of coins on there and have one or two of the, uh, the units have all the rigs inside it because there you have all the surface area, right? And if you're, by the way, if your roofs 
are if you if you build so if anyone wants to to learn about going solar go to awakensolar.com i'm happy to teach you or help you um, my information's on there you can contact me in any state i'd be happy to break down how it works and give you honest information not a sales pitch right so um how it works in building materials or if you were to build a new home or uh, so in my house, I have trees around me and I built a carport to put solar on. So it's now my solar structure. The cost of building that sar- that carport gets the solar tax credit as well, which is 26%. Really? Rocking yes. all. So if you're building, if you were say, I'm going to build a Bitcoin slash solar um, mining commercial storage facility, uh, part of your roof cost that you would have built anyway and paid anyway are now get the, get the solar tax credit if it's a solar project. So that's just like one of the big secrets in solar and uh, a lot of accountants didn't even know that and didn't tell clients that. And we, as the solar industry guys, were constantly saying this and I've had accountants question me on it. And where is that written? And uh, just this past, it's been around for 10 years, but just this past year, the IRS finally truly defined that, you know, the section of roof, let's say you need a new roof and you have a North and South section of your roof and you're going to put solar here. All of these new shingles or metal is going to going to qualify for the solar tax credit if you do solar with it. So, so you it, can't so you, you can't know. build a house to to. I you can't build this house can't. to hold the solar panels and. <laughs> I, I recommend doing that. No, you build a house to hold solar. Now, let's say you 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 build a house for half half a million dollars. Do you get twenty six percent of half a million? No. no. Yeah you get whatever is required and part of the project cost for solar. So like the electrical wiring and part of that roof structure are eligible. But what it does is it basically gives you free solar. I mean, we, I've done huge commercial projects where we built awnings, you know, and the, the, the solar panels are the roof that provides shade. One's a car wash and where you vacuum, you know, sometimes it's uncovered, but they started adding awnings and yeah. they do solar awnings. And now people don't get rained on or don't get, uh, you know, they're not getting sunburned in summer when they've cleaned their car and they're vacuuming it out. And the car wash is powered by the solar. And with the tax credit, they basically have thousands of dollars of free revenue per year because they're not paying thousands of dollars for electric costs. So one of the things a lot of people have down here for storms is natural gas generators, like whole house natural gas generators. I'm I'm guessing that that must just be a lot more expensive though than and solar or whatever alternatives are and that's the that's the reason why it's only used as a backup right uh, is, is yeah. i mean i don't do you know the numbers on that or you, is that you, would, burn, you, at you would burn a significant amount of dollars you know you would spend a far greater amount in dollars to power your home from a generator every year than you would you know the grid or solar okay. uh, the okay. problem that you have with solar as as serving the same purpose as that generator is that Mm -hmm. during an emergency situation, you need batteries, which are very expensive currently, but coming way down in price. So I think in the next few years, you're going to see the cost of battery storage. And and like I said, with potentially just your EV as your battery storage, be less per kilowatt hour than generators are today and be less than the grid in a few years because the infrastructure, the transmission costs that the grid has to incur, that doesn't exist when you have power locally. And so Right now, running a generator and running it on propane or gasoline or diesel, um, you only want that thing to fire up during emergencies because if you were to keep it full of diesel and spending thousands of using thousands of kilowatt hours uh, to generate from diesel is, is going to be pretty expensive. And so solar is cheaper, but you have a storage problem. All right, storage. So I, 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 excuse me for maybe uh, changing subject a little bit, but I've got a, I've got a challenge for you. Okay. okay. I love this. <laughs> So Blockstream, okay, has a uh, satellite network. The Blockstream satellite network broadcasts the Bitcoin blockchain around the world 24-7 for free, pr- hmm. protecting against network interruptions and providing areas without reliable internet connections with the opportunity to use Bitcoin. So you can actually get a satellite kit from store.blockstream.com. So I think it'd be really super cool to set up a Bitcoin node that runs off of solar that connects to the Bitcoin network with the Blockstream satellite basic kit. It's $399 so that you can be one of the people that ensures that no matter what happens. Right. <laughs> the network is still alive. Yeah. The uh, network is still alive. Let's do it. I've, I've already <laughs> built a truck that, that's powered on completely solar. It's a big old truck and it needs something to power when it's sitting down. So I'm going to put a, a node inside it. I'm, I've, you've convinced me. 
Justin, no. This would be uh, this would be kind of cool. This would be. I mean, you know, you could even. I would imagine that uh, there may be an opportunity because they're just selling the satellite kit, but why not sell the whole freaking kit and caboodle, yes. you know, because um, setting up a Bitcoin note is something that takes quite a bit of time too, just to download it. and, and Right. Uh, but speaking of kind of cool to... something that's that's on my immediate to-do list is is like we were talking about before, you know, an off-grid home kit or an RV kit mm. and, and the basic like small, medium, large packages, depending on what you want to power, how many watts you want. And you could immediately just take and run those same numbers to, you know, if your RV sitting parked, what, what could that run as far as a, you know, a crypto machine, a rig. And yeah, that's, that'll be broken down really soon. I, I, I look forward to that, that challenge of uh, seeing if we can do I'd some, also, some rigs. I'd also love to, uh, to, to hear somebody say, and I'm sure somebody has, but like, yeah, here's some Ethereum that I just generated with, you know, from the sun, you know, yeah. so. <laughs> That's what's so cool about it is that you're literally, yeah. I mean, you're, you're making power that can do, I mean, everything we do now uses electricity, basically everything. And then, and then everything natural uh, is, is solar powered, right? The tides, uh, sun and the moon create the tides. Wind power is, is due to the sun, you know, the, the cooling and heating effects create wind and, you know, every organism for virtually every organism and plant animal you've ever touched or eaten or come in contact with came oh, from yeah. sunlight and and so I'm, that nuclear reactor in the sky is what we need to be using for energy and um like i said i'm solar powered I'm, yeah i'm not someone who believes that gas and diesel should go away immediately but we right. should yeah. start to transition ourselves to something that's more energy uh independent gives you energy independence and is more sustainable long term and so yes there's a cost to solar panels you know some of these myths that float around about the toxic chemicals and the cost to produce them i mean there isn't a better way to produce energy that that you can have that you can put in your own backyard you know we talk about oh you know i I'm, my cousin works in the oil field so does mine but that doesn't mean that oil uh is going to completely disappear it just means that i can't put an oil refinery in my backyard to power my house to potentially right. mine bitcoin but yeah. i can put a few solar panels there yeah and that's really cool you know it, it's just it's the most direct way to harness the energy that we have available that we use every day that we need to survive and um, without having to ruin water supplies and uh, all the other side effects that come with the other energy generation. You know, I'm not hating on them. They were necessary. We've had the industrial revolution. It's time we have the solar revolution and the crypto revolution. And so they go hand in hand. There's so much in common here. It's been, you know, really fun to explore and an off grid solar node slash rig is, is coming. Yeah. So with crypto, the whole idea is to become unbanked, to sort of unplug from the the companies that uh, become predatory, right? That, you know, I, I was listening to Mark Cuban. He was talking about this, by, by the way, he's become a huge, huge yeah. uh, crypto guy. It's so funny. Says, the bandwagon just keeps, I know. keeps growing. He says that DeFi is just going to kick the butt of the banking system basically because he's like you know i've i'm he's a billionaire right i got right. Uh, they know who i am and just getting my own money out of the bank is like incredibly painful and difficult and i have to jump through all kinds of hoops and all this other stuff and i gotta talk to this person and they gotta then they gotta talk to that person and on and on it goes you know and he's like with DeFi, you know you can do all the things like you can buy synthetics which are like derivatives right mm -hmm. the whole thing with the wall street's bets i know you were messing around with some of that stuff too and yeah and i caught Robin it right that right before it hit and <laughs> Got right. get in on the action. But you've got these decentralized exchanges. You've got lending protocols now like Aave and others where you can literally use the collateral that you have in crypto to go out and get a loan. And you can do it in like 10 seconds instead of having to go. And, you know, when you what do, we, what do you have to give the bank when you apply for a loan? Like basically everything about you ever, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And uh, so it's just way more efficient and all sort of things. So, so with crypto, it's about becoming unbanked. And uh, I'm just saying like with solar, it's about becoming unplugged, right? Exactly. Just that. Exactly. I mean, you to be clear, uh, I'm a fan of the largest machine the world has ever seen, which is the grid. The grid is a beautiful thing. It's allowed, it's sure. allowed prosperity, you know, um, farmers who, who, you know, I, I was reading when I was in Texas with uh, Project Griffin, my electronic truck, um, I stopped in Johnson City, where I believe Lyndon B. Johnson was from. And okay. I remember reading the story there. They have their own little co-op. And I was reading the story about he was integral in his be beginnings of his political career. We're going around to the farmers and all the members of that community and, and trying to bring them electricity, right, with the grid, getting the grid, getting, getting the, the legislation passed 
to bring them electricity at a cheap rate. And um, it's still today, we have a lot of people that are on the edge of the grid where it's not reliable. If we start to put solar there, it becomes more reliable. It gives them, you know, breaks on their electricity, but it's just such a such an American idea for me to, oh, absolutely. You know, yeah, to have your, it goes way back. I don't know. Have you ever read? I just, I, I'm super fascinated about and love to read about uh, Nikolai Tesla and, uh, and then I'm obviously Thomas Edison and, and, you know, they're competing the, the things that they were trying to do in the battle and all the stuff back behind there. But right. I remember reading that Tesla had a, a system. I think he was operating out of Colorado Springs where, and then he had like a tower somewhere in, 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 uh, like on Manhattan, um, Rhode Island or someplace like this, but he was, he was saying that he had figured out a way to basically transmit electricity wirelessly. Yeah. And, uh, through the earth, this is the story. Yeah. Like through the ethers or something like that. And, uh, I don't know. I think it was like JP. No, it was, a, Oh, I forget JP which one it was. But- was his backer, Morgan? I think, or one of his was backers. It, yeah. Was it Morgan? It was either Morgan or Rockefeller somebody, but it was one of the railroad tycoons of, of that time, mm-hmm. whatever was like backing him, but then they, but then they start to realize uh, we don't have a mechanism to charge for this. <laughs> for this. You, what <laughs> you're doing sounds great and all, but how do we make money? Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's really, you know, you follow the money. And, and like I said, while yeah. the grid is, I'm a fan of the grid and it's, it's done a lot of things, you know, since America was kind of founded and grew in the, in the early um, 20th century. Well, now it's the 21st century and right. the grid has kind of taken a step to where we don't need these centralized entities to control the power generation. We still need the grid. We need the transmission and the ability to do that, but the weaknesses in it, we can completely eliminate um, or, or you as an individual can eliminate them by just owning a few solar panels uh, and a little bit of storage. And it'd be great it, to see it go that way. It, I mean, it's already going that way. You mentioned before yeah. you were talking about the, uh, I'm trying to remember now the the planetary thing, <laughs> in a, might be, but in that reminded me, file system. My there you go, the planetary yeah. file system. That remind that's already being done. So when I was at Brown, um, I, I I didn't want to interrupt you, but it came to mind that they already had that. They have their own network, a university. They kind right. of have their own network where their library and everything is on this file system that's that's separate. You know, it's you can access it, but other people can't. Right. Right. And, you're on their network. And that's happening with solar in the form of what's called microgrids. So what we're describing right. here is basically just another iteration of a microgrid where you have this community, whether it's an apartment complex or a university or a city that has their own power, their own storage, all of their files stored locally. And um, it, it just creates more resiliency, whether or not they exchange power with outside states, markets, cities, um, yeah. they have the ability to do what's called islanding and become their own island, right? So nice. if the rest of the grid goes down, you're going to start to see communities and cities that are, are able to island and, and become their own power grid. And, and that's going to create, you know, the, there's the, a, there's another possible networks. marrying of the uh, solar technology with cryptocurrency technology there with what you're talking about where, and I know some people are working on it. Uh, Gavin Woods is the, the is one of the original uh, founders of Ethereum and he's the founder of Polkadot. That's his new project that launched this last year. And uh, he's working on something, I believe, where the idea behind it is also sort of like if you have a neighborhood of, 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 that, of homes that have solar power, that you can kind of wire those all together and, and maybe even potentially provide power to, to homes that don't have solar, but then run the whole thing through a, a um, smart contract, right? So that's one of the big things within Ethereum and cryptocurrency and Cardano and Polkadot and all these have, they have these smart contracts, which are basically ways that we can do all kinds of things. One of the things that we might be able to do with that is set up a system in such a, like if I'm sending power out to that out of my home and it's going to a hundred other different places, the smart contract can track all of that and I could get paid in crypto and, and just some interesting things that right. might come, might, there might be possibilities there that might come down the road, all of I which mean, is just kind of going in the direction of, you know, not being dependent and reliant upon that, that, that primary provider. I remember one time I went on vacation and I came home and uh, I was gone long enough that I didn't pay my power bill and I forgot, you know, whatever. I didn't pay it while I was gone. And I come back and they'd shut it off and I had to go pay to have it turned back on. You know, and I'm like talking to the lady and I remember like, I couldn't believe how much the fee was to get it turned back on. And I was like one day late or something, you know, right. I'm like, well, I guess I'll just go to your competitor. Oh wait, there is no competitor. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, most, in so, most states, there is no competitor. Yeah. And Texas is one of the few that 
you know, whatever their weaknesses with the storm uh, for solar, they already have a deregulated system where they have competing generation sources. So whether you go solar or you you pick this company or that company, you pay the company for the transmission lines and, and it's separate from the generation. Yeah. Most states it's married where they have a really archaic billing system and it costs a lot of money to get your power turned back on. You're, you might be paying too little for your service and transmission costs. And they've kind of pulled some of that money out of your per kilowatt hour cost. And so now they're complaining and fighting the solar industry saying it costs too much money, you know, for us to, we're subsidizing solar customers. They're not paying their fair share. Well, that's because your, your per month service charge for the transmission is, is too little for everyone. So they need to fix that, not come down on the solar industry. And so to my final point, like we've covered a lot, but there are so many really simple and elegant solutions, especially when it comes to seeing the future. And I mean, we're speculating on some things that are going to happen, but electricity demand isn't going to go down. There are just too many things that are that are going to cause huge demand. Electricity yeah. prices aren't going to go down because you have to invest in something to generate that. And so, you know, investing in solar locally will save you money. And what we're going to see happen is that basically you're going to have a, a, a cost effective return of a cost effectiveness returns of owning your own solar. That's just going to go up and up and, and people are going to keep coming on board. Absolutely. All right. Well, before we wrap this up, tell everybody where they can uh, learn more about you and, and follow you and yeah. uh, get your information once again. So uh, awaken solar.com or just on social awaken solar. And uh, we'll be making videos about our uh, crypto mining kits with solar and RV kits and things like that. Uh, I'm really dedicated now, finally, after I finished my trip to, to making all this content. And I want to cover one more thing. Okay. This is a solar cell, right? Nice. There it is. It's silica. Okay. It's uh, one of the most plentiful uh, compounds or like, no, chemicals in, in, okay. in, on the earth. It doesn't take a lot of toxic chemicals to make this and it's completely recyclable. So all the myths that you hear about solar, uh, a lot of them aren't true. And they're just people that are trying to come up with reasons, you know, I don't know why uh, to hate on it, but it's, it's the easiest way to generate your own power and to then generate your own money with crypto. And if you want to learn about crypto, where do we go, Justin? <laughs> Blockthrasher.com. We've got a vibrant group on okay. Facebook as well. Block, it's uh, facebook.com forward slash uh, groups forward slash Blockthrasher and a uh, YouTube channel. Well, the podcast is a really great way, though, too. And you can get it on Spotify or Apple or Google or uh, anchor.fm or any, any place, really. Uh, one last question before, before we go. I wanted to ask you, if you could accomplish anything in the next five years with no restrictions, money being no object, nothing holding you back, what would you do? What would you accomplish in the next five years? Five years, and I have yeah. like a magic wand amount of money and and an ability to get things done because it's not just about money. <laughs> no, money being no object. Like if there's anything that yeah. you could change in the world or that you would just accomplish or do answer. in five years, what Bezos. would it be? Yeah, if I'm Jeff Bezos, what I would do is put in a a infrastructure transportation mechanism in America um, to to basically eliminate long haul trucking and cars from from being powered by gasoline and diesel. Um, not eliminate necessarily, but just to provide a way for a truck driver to go from, you know, coast to go coast to coast or across state lines using electricity and using solar electricity. Because when I was driving my truck, I see the roof of these 18 wheelers and their trailers. And I'm thinking there's so much surface area there that, and, and with their hourly requirements, what they're required to drive is mostly during the daytime. So you've got mm -hmm. all these truckers all day, and if they're on I-10, let's say in America, they're getting tons of sunlight. It's just going to waste and it could be powering that rig. So putting in, you know, let's say maybe the, call it a train system that's that's electric, a high-speed train system that's electric. Um, right. I could see where you could have like electric vehicles that could maybe travel on that road or those tracks right. that, um, that's electric that you could then take off and still have your independence, still go wherever you want. But when you're on right. this, this system, you know, because basically if we... If we revolutionize and and go ahead of the curve instead of being a first world country that's behind the curve with our infrastructure and our our transportation costs and our basically you know America has gotten more energy independent but we still we look at how much uh, oil we still buy from Saudi Arabia and and Iran and all these countries and it's the the wars and the amount of death that we've had I mean just yeah. look up all the names I mean there are websites that have the names of all the Americans that have died over these conflicts and um, it's all about money and, and energy. 
and if we Absolutely. create our own energy and if we have it and it powers our our infrastructure um you know getting a smart person from new york to california or to texas to florida uh for almost free and and having that sort of uh system that that's what i would focus on i think that would revolutionize and it would also help with the cost of energy and again so on all those roads you know are all those the tops of those trains or trucks and cars solar you invest in that that's jobs and um you create a much cheaper and more efficient, faster transportation system. I did see that somebody, this was a while ago I read about, had developed a road system that was solar panels. Okay, no, so stop right there. I've, I've actually met, met these people uh, yeah. from Idaho. Um, they raised $1.5 or $2 million on uh, one of the first Indiegogo campaigns, crowdfunding, okay. very okay. successful campaign. It's been now going on, I believe, a decade or maybe six or eight years since that campaign happened. Um, they haven't sold a single system. Um, they've installed one in their hometown. Um, a lot of people on the internet had focused on debunking it. I think the idea is good, but I don't think it is as easy to implement as they expected. And I think basically there's a lot more easy ways to, to, to accomplish what they're trying to do by making the rooftops. So in, in other countries, I know they've built a, um, like a bike lane next to roads, that's okay. made of solar panel. It's got an awning that's solar panels. Okay. If you want rooftops yeah. to be solar, you don't want to put heavy weight yeah. on top of solar panels. And then and the so, cars are obstructing the sun. Yeah, part of the time. <laughs> solar roads, solar roadways is what it was called. And it, it's um, you know, they, they I think France or somewhere did a small one, and it just it's not easy. It it's possible, but it's just so it's got so many problems that it's not feasible. And there are okay. much easier way. Like, why not have a, a like I said the the rooftop of all of our um. If we start making all of our semi trailers tomorrow with solar rooftops and we just have a battery in there that stores power, not, you know, like your propane tanks in my hometown you used to, you know, when you wanted to go grill on Saturday, you take your empty one, go to the convenience store, you grab a full one, you leave the empty one. Why can't we do that with batteries? And the solar is just, you know, on top of the gas station or on top of a semi charging a battery every time. And when they get to a truck stop, they drop off full batteries and they, maybe they make 20 bucks. Someone comes along with an electric char car and immediately takes the full battery and puts it in their EV. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Tesla's not yeah. going to do that for exactly. whatever reason. But if, hmm. uh, like I said, if I was king of the world or Jeff Bezos, putting a few well, million Musk, Musk that, would be, yeah, or Musk. I mean, he could Musk do would it. Be the it, guy, he could do it. I don't, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's hard because the governments of each state, and that's what you're yeah. seeing. The just with solar, I mean, just with a few thousand customers in Idaho, you're seeing pushback from the, you know, the powers that be, the, the power right. company. And yeah, that's the thing. It seems to me like uh, that's one of the issues that you run up against is not only are you going to potentially be suppressed by government, but the oil companies and others, you know, if, if it's not them doing it, then but they're, they're coming around, but they're trying yeah. to still control the right. power. So Shell Oil left OPEC a few years ago. And what did they do with a lot of their money? They invested into Sonnen, a German battery company. And right. so, again, they're, they're wanting to to, you know, sell you your power uh, forever. And I right. think that's why you're not seeing EVs integrate solar charging because, you know, it's it's against the grid's interest or the, the millions mm -hmm. and billions mm -hmm. of grid power for right. them to have a car that doesn't buy power from the grid. That's why I was going to say that, you know, I love your, your, your five-year whatever, you know, idea plan, whatever, but I, I feel like uh, I was thinking similar to you, but maybe a, a better way to go about it is... And, and people have been talking about these concepts of, of like a citadel city type of thing or whatever, yeah. where you where you just create a community, you know, you of, of like minded people, and you just set out. Sometimes it's easier instead of changing a, a legacy system or something that is you just build something completely new totally. and do yeah. it the right way. You that's know, my that that's be. my actual ten to twenty year goal. Let's say, <laughs> okay, right? okay, okay. The, the magic wand and money is unlimited. It's kind of like yeah, Jeff Bezos could do it. He's going to space. So is Elon Musk. I think they're more focused on some of those problems. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas I think the, you know, my, one of my slogans with Awaken is power to the people, right? Giving yeah. people their own power. Um, and I think, you know, making things cheaper for the average consumer uh, is one of my goals. And solar does that. I think crypto is, is exactly that as well. It's giving, you know, the financial power to the people. You're, you're yeah. not relying on yeah. these banks anymore. You're not relying on yeah. the corruption that ensues. Same with power yeah. companies. It, when you get a system that's really big, it, it breeds corruption and, you know, absolute absolutely. power corrupts, yeah. ab corrupts absolutely, Abs right? Absolutely. That's we right. can be doing our part <laughs> to uh, to make the world a little better place. 
Well, that's awesome. That's great. I, I thank you. Thank you for coming on today and just spending a little Thanks time with me. me. And it's yeah, fun. it's been, it's been a blast. I hope people enjoy it. And, uh, yeah. To everyone who's listening, just be sure to, to hit that subscribe button and share with your family and friends and uh, kind of keep coming back for more. I love and appreciate you all. And uh, it's been, it's been good. Uh, thank you for your time. And yeah. we'll have to Look talk forward to having one of these. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I, I don't know. Were you going to say you're going to do your own podcast? Say, soon soon here, is that? And in the future, as, as you know, it's not going to be too long before there's something new in Bitcoin to talk about and something new in the energy industry or solar to talk about. And, um, you know, we covered a lot of the basics today and how they relate and are intertwined. And I think we're going to start seeing in the next few years, just more and more uh, intermingling, but look forward to being on again and hope, hope all the best for Block Thrasher. It's, it's been a lot of, it's given me a lot of value by being a member. And I've only a few months now, I just perused when I can. Well, I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm trying to up the production quality, you know, so Wait, the, the equipment will be coming. You know, I, I had some audio problems last couple of days, which I think I've resolved for the most part. But but, you know, I'm, I'm super mobile. I kind of live in three places right now. I'm here oh. in Texas just wintering. And then we're going to be in Washington because my girlfriend has a, a ranch, like a 190 acre ranch that we've got to get it's prepared solar to sell. On it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and they have a, lot, a bunch of live streams, so they were looking at hydro too. That was one of the questions I had for you. I don't know if you're just going to do solar, but uh, it, you know, it seems like maybe having some hydro solutions too maybe would be well, something yeah. interesting. But I, yeah. I love I love hydro. Uh, I hate the 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 limitations that it has when it when you come when you start talking about big dams and scaling it. It's really right. tough. But for a local system. Um, I think solar with hydro storage is is an amazingly simple, elegant solution to let's say instead of buying big batteries or a power wall and these all these chemicals and things and and, and it's got a lifespan right versus if you yeah. just take let's say you have a water tower like a small water tower on a ranch um, you you let the solar pump the water up uh, every day the sun's out and as the water falls it can turn a turbine and that's hydro that's a battery I mean it's right a there, battery yeah. of just water and a container and it'll last yeah. forever um, yeah. It's it's such a beautiful. Or if thing. you have a live stream, that's just or five or six. The stream can too, as long as you don't interrupt. You know that that ecosystem because yeah. that's what happens is if you're taking that water and getting enough power from it with some turbine system, fish and you know maybe downstream it's changing things. So that's that's the only caution of, of yeah. doing doing hydro in just a stream. But yeah, you you could easily put a small turbine in. The problem is um, they don't create enough power to let's say power an average house without a lot of them. Oh, okay. If you have enough solar panels and enough of these, or like a big enough water tank, um, you could have enough power to run every day uh, a house. Like yeah, so maybe a combination we keep, we keep of different things. We keep finding things. more yeah. things to talk about. So like I said, we'll have to just do it again. Well, and I imagine as time goes on, the, the technology keeps improving on all of these. Yeah, can't um, wait. It's exciting time to be alive. Right? Yeah. Buy some crypto now and then buy some solar later if you don't want to have to pay any money. <laughs> You know, you use the gains from the crypto to buy it. There you go. All right. Well, thank you, Joshua. I hope you have a great day and we'll, we'll reconnect soon for sure. Thanks, Justin. Appreciate it, okay, man. Love what all you're right. Doing. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye now. Bye.